I believe it's price up, yield down. If on the first order condition of inflation coming in, how will bonds react and where is the opportunity to go from 9% to say 7% inflation? Yeah, so what we've been noticing in the market, and there has been incredible volatility in the inflation markets and in the bond markets recently, right. is that there has been a repricing of inflation, particularly when you look at the one-year, one-year inflation swap. So what the market expects, not for this year, but for next year. It's erased all of that inflation risk premium that got baked into the market as a result of the invasion of Ukraine and all of the upside inflation that we've been talking about for essentially half a year. Um, and so what we're trying to debate right now is, is this a true signal that inflation is going to decelerate or is the Fed actually going to need to continue to press? Because the data they're looking at actually is not showing any signal right. yet that they need to uh, stop hiking right. rates. How do you use Bruce Kasman and Michael Faroli's work, particularly on the labor economy? Faroli puts that on the weekly prospects. It's not on page one. He's got it buried on page seven, where he's talking about the labor dynamics of the United States. How do you fold the labor question? that John Farrow just mentioned into what yield and price are going to do. Yeah, well, the labor market is still very strong, and it does paint a very confusing picture. You have GDP, which is weak. You have the Atlanta Fed, which is tracking at minus 2%. Now, a lot of that is not necessarily organically driven. There is a 200 basis point detraction in that in that forecast from inventories. But really, what we look at in terms of are we in a recession is, are we seeing the unemployment rate rise and is nominal income falling? And neither of those things are happening. And to get the unemployment rate to rise this year, you're going to need to see a material deceleration in payrolls growth, which is not what we're expecting. In fact, just to get it back to 4% by the end of the year, you would need 15,000 job loss on average for the next seven months to get there. So we're not in that environment yet. Uh, jobless claims is what we're watching to see if that's I, I just, ticking up. Just, but for now, the unemployment John, rate is on the decline. Never in my career have we hoped for a job loss. Like, it's the honest well, let's, thing. let's be clear. I'm not sure Kelsey is hoping for that. I'm not hoping for oh, that. Oh, yeah, Kelly's yeah, I not. get that. You're but not. But ultimately, when you look bizarre. at the Fed's trajectory of things, there is a belief that's what they're trying to engineer, to take some of the heat out of this labor market, and there will be consequences. Unfortunately, this is how this works, Kelsey. So we're trying to understand how much pain they're willing to tolerate, how far they're willing to push it. And what business the two-year has at 282 if you think this Fed carries on hiking? So the two-year yield right now is actually inverted to what the market expects the Fed funds rate to be in just three months' time. So the market is really pushing the Fed right now and saying, how much longer is this rate hiking cycle going to last? And in our view, it's going to last for a bit longer. Uh, it's not yet time for the Fed to uh, say that they've accomplished their mis mission, even with inflation expectations in the market declining. We do expect that the Fed will hike rates seven 75 basis points in July. We expect them to hike another 50. And by the way, right now, the market is not even pricing in a full rate hike for December. We think that the market is getting just a bit, uh, going a bit overshot here in terms of the two-year yield, um, and it should be going higher. Well, I heard something similar from Priya Misra over at TD Securities earlier this morning saying essentially inflation's still the problem and the problem is going to stick around. Therefore, expect the Fed to stay the course and be more aggressive. She said what all that leads to is a yield curve that is going to become even more deeply inverted. Is that the same camp you're in, Kelsey? We've been expecting the yield curve to invert. Uh, it has been inverting. Different parts of the yield curve have been inverting at different times. Right now, we're seeing the belly lead in the inversion. So the five to 10-year point is what le what is leading. And that's because the market is, is testing the Fed. Again, they're testing the Fed and saying, can you really go through with this, particularly as the growth signals are really decelerating? And we noticed that the growth data that's been released more recently uh, really is showing more of a deceleration than I think people thought. Uh, that third revision to Q1 GDP, I mean, no one looks at the third revision to Q1 GDP. It showed a m really meaningful deceleration in services spending. And we need to be careful because we know that the consumer is this primary engine of growth, and they're not as on as strong footing as we originally anticipated. I don't remember when we traded on expectations of inflation, and you, Mitch, either, and 
here we are. It's all confusing to me. I need to squeeze this in, Kelsey. It's just the final question. High yield spreads have been widened out mm. for five straight sessions. We're at 583. You and Bob Michael work closely with each other. I just want to understand from, from you and the team, has that got interesting yet for you? It's a bit of a no man's land right now because spreads are too narrow uh, if we are uh, expecting a full-blown recession, but they're probably uh, too wide if we're going to escape recession. But in the longer term, we do think fundamentals in the corporate, uh, in the high yield market are actually much better better than they have been going into previous recessions. So if you think about it and think about defaults, defaults peaked around 10% in the last, uh, in in the great financial crisis. We don't think they're going to peak at nearly as high as a a rate and around 600 basis points on spread. That's already pricing in around a 6% default rate and a 35% recovery rate. So actually a lot is priced in. The market is considering um, a modest amount of default risk, but unfortunately, Uh, the markets do tend to overshoot. And so it is possible that you continue to get that spread widening that goes beyond what we think is probably uh, justified based on our default expectations uh, in this next downturn. 